doesn't seem to be sent. Nice, two, three. The bee and the flower. Time to spawn, yeah. Game over, yeah. Nice crits, boys. Nice crits. The anemone and the clownfish. The bacteria and the human body. Oh, I just disconnected randomly. Oh, nice. Benji, crits. The mutualistic relationships where each no, 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 individual no, no, no. benefits from yeah, the activity of the other. This is how I see Menix with their crits creep partners. One giving crits while the other is utilizing it. A collective bond in which you are the one that keeps the team together. Hi, I'm Benji52, and join me in my Team Fortress 2 guide. How to use the crits creep. <laughs> The Crit Squeak is a level 7 minigun that gives a 100% critical hit chance for 8 seconds. It is most effective on defense, where the lack of sentry guns and passive aggressive playstyle it permits grants you with a much larger chance of quenching the enemy team's morale. It also charges slightly faster than that of the minigun, 8 seconds faster if you are always spreading your overheals. This means you want to use it as often yet effectively as you can. If you can beat the other medic to uber every time, and kill his team before he can counter you, the momentum your team provides will be enough to deny any strong push from the blue team. The rest of your loadout should involve the Crusader's crossbow and the uber saw. The Crusader's crossbow is an amazing tool for granting faster healing per second in a pinch, and for dealing quick support fire. Firing one bolt, then back to healing is so much more beneficial than killing enemies up close. Your survival is a priority, therefore it should always be your go-to. The Ubersaw is amazing for the huge profit grants. 25% Uber per hit will give your team even more ever needed momentum when you use your crits. If you are getting medics to rage like this, you know that you're doing it right. <laughs> Times in casual are wonderful, aren't they? Where your team has three snipers and four spies, everyone is new to the game, and totally not being sarcastic here. Uh -huh. And friendly Hoovies stroll across the battlefield. So then, how are you even supposed to know who to pocket and give your Ubers to? Thankfully, there are many ways you can find the perfect pan that you are looking for. First, you can look at the general area for players. What classes are they? What weapons are they using? How is their positioning before the game starts? Are they using useful bites? With enough game sense, you can figure out who will be a good fit for your healing playstyle. But if you are unsure, you can check later on who has the most score and if they have a kill streak or not. Did I just say kill streak weapons? It's sadly true. Unusual holders can mean they just sit around on trade servers. A kill streak shumble shows they mean business and want to make sure they complete the objective no matter what. You cannot keep yourself alive without knowing who can you can rely on to protect you. What oh, nice, top scoring. The crit squeak enforces survival unlike any other minigun. While the other minigun super can save your life, all you're gonna do with the crit squeak is look like a delicate firebug with his glow snuffed out. To stay alive in building Uber, you need to stay close to where the choke, the imaginary line of the heat of combat is, but not too far as to where you can't heal everyone individually. If there are at least two to three people to heal at all times and always an escape route, you've hit the sweet spot. An example is at Barn Blitz Point 2. Many people to heal, close to the choke, and a place to escape. These places are where you want to stay when building Uber, and every map and point has one. Do this while always looking behind you for spies and not coming out of your hiding place, and you should never die. If you are dying lots to snipers, stop looking at your surroundings and instead hide at your healing spot. This is very important. Don't peek sniper sightlines. As soon as you see even a little bit of your team's hold get demolished, get out. Run away and get to the next point. If your team does manage to hold it, you can always come back again. Eventually, as your game sense improves, you will be able to realise when it's time to cut your losses and go. If your pocket overextends or is about to die, leave him. It's much better you staying alive than trying to save an inevitable death for both of you. Just remember to watch out for sniper sidelines.
Like I said earlier, you want to use your critical read as often as possible, yet as effective as possible. The best place to use it is if your pocket is going into the choke, multiple enemies nearby, or you believe that if you don't use it against the enemy, he will likely lose the fight. Holding a crit is generally bad as it gives the other team's medics a chance to use Uber themselves. Before you choose a preferred player, you must periodically consider these three things. Is he fully loaded or have the ammunition? Is he the right class for the job? Does he have the right positioning? Ready to pop? If the player is the right class, he loads out the action first and then goes towards choke expecting to use crits, he is the person to keep on critting. Reload! Yes! Oh my! When your pocket is fully loaded and ready to go, by using your crits just as he is about to shoot, you can sit back and watch the carnage. <laughs> yeah. Even if your pocket doesn't reload fully before anticipating your crits, if you suspect a group of enemies around the corner, it is worth to use it and keep it. Remember, the more effective crits you use, the better. <laughs> Battalion's backup plus crits. Once the banner is used, the pair charge in and the medic uses crits. This is very powerful as it addresses the medic's key weakness, leaving you to tackle enemies on like you would a noob. Crit stickies before round starts. Get to the front line fast enough, and if you see them on with a sticky bomb launcher, crit him before the round starts. This essentially gives your team a free crits, and any advantage you get helps. Sometimes, when situations permit, you will have to use your weapons to either defend yourself or a teammate. When a lone wolf is way overextended and you know you can get free uber source from them, when you need to do some concentrated damage for a split second, understand this guide, and to mentally take it to heart, it is wise to play the other classes where you are pocketing another medic. Try pocketing as a soldier, pyro, heavy, or other such class that can protect the medic well. Now all you have to do is watch that medic does right, but where he also makes mistakes, like a re-evaluation. By understanding their behaviours and your own, your game sense will improve drastically, meaning you will be able to be a more effective medic as a result. You cannot steal my best kill streak for the round then. It's not allowed. Ah, uh, my crits is ready. Oh, he got me. Dang. Okay, I'm gonna get that health pack. Okay, are you a spy? What? <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. I need help back, I need help back. Oh, crap. Ah, that's so good. There's a demo leg on me. Go black. Holy crap. Oh, you got god! The final thing is to not let get down by other players. 
Many people in game will say to me that I suck as a medic, even though they are the ones overextending, getting themselves killed, or nowhere, nowhere near where they are supposed to be. This occurs to you too. If players blame you for their mistakes, it's not because you are bad, it's because they can't appreciate a healer. If they are not liking the way you play medic, you should tell them to go medic themselves. That however doesn't mean you should take it literally and do whatever you want. If players such as me are advising you to do it in a useful way, do it. The good leaders are the ones who can not only keep the team together, but can help others get better too. So listen. For more medic tips, stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Accept your card. <laughs>